And there's a quote on here also that says, in the absence of clearly defined goals, we become strangely loyal to performing daily trivia until ultimately we become enslaved by it. How many of you have ever spent a day sitting in front of your computer where you're in your inbox all day long? You get nothing else done, right? You do, you get enslaved by it. it and I, I fall victim to this myself. I started reading uh, Timothy Ferris's book, Four Hour Work Week. Well, actually, I've read it twice, and I've listened to it on audiobook a couple times. And he talks about the fact that you should schedule your email. Don't get there in the morning, start clicking on your inbox and reading all your emails, because you're going to be in there all day long. Wait till noon. You know, wait till 4 o'clock. Schedule that stuff out. Take control of your time. Now, on this circle here, I'm going to draw a very probably imperfect circle here. But on here, you're going to see that you've got those six areas. And you'll see the gradation lines on each one of these. And what you're going to do is you're going to go in there, you're going to rate yourself from 0 to 10 on how satisfied you are with that area of your life. And you've, you'll see you've got the wealth, you've got fitness, you've got fun, you've got health, you've got all that stuff on there. And let's say you go in there and you decide, you know what, I think I'm probably about a 7 in just about everything. So you go in there and you kind of circle your sevens. What you're going to do next, once you've graded yourself on each one of these areas, you're going to draw a line from one to the next. And what you're going to do after you get that little graph, whatever it turns out to look like, I want you to picture this as a wheel that's actually going to be rolling along. If you're a seven in pretty much everything in your life, Life's going to roll along pretty well, right? You may not be a 10 in all these areas, but you're still pretty balanced. And I would say you'd be a pretty happy person at that point. Now, if you go out there and you do this and you are realistic about it, you may find that you're an 8 in maybe finances. Maybe you're doing very well, you got a high income paying job, but in order to do that, you had to be a 2 on family, you know, or on social, because you haven't spent any time with your family. And maybe you go out there and your health is maybe a four, and this one's up here, and that one's there, and you know, this one's here. Well then when you go to connect these, and you picture this rolling along, this is your life rolling along, how well is that going to roll? It's going to be a bumpy ride, isn't it? So this is where you're going to see the deficiencies. This is where you're going to see, and you may even have to say, you know what, I need to take less time at work. Maybe I need to taper back on this a little bit to give me the time, the resources I need to flush this out a little bit. But you'll start to see where your imbalances are. You'll start to see why you're so unhappy, even though I've got all the success over here. Because it's got to be balanced. It's got to be every aspect of your life. Now, there's a quote on the bottom of page 11 I want to go back to real quick. And it says, do not wait. The time will never be just right. Start where you stand and work with whatever tools you may have at your command, and better tools will be found as you go along. This is from Napoleon Hill. And you hear all the time, you hear people that are out there, again, making excuses of why they haven't got started, why they haven't accomplished the things that they want in life. They say things like, well, you know what, when that new president gets elected, then I'm going to get started. Things will be primed, things will be perfect, that's really what I need to get started. Or, you know, when Aunt Jenny moves out of the guest room, then we can start doing the things we need to do. When the kids go back to school, then I'm going to get started. But then, of course, the kids go back to school, well, you know what, we got to help them with their homework, and we got to take <laughs> little Jenny to her ballet practice and everything else. You know what, it doesn't have time to get started right now. So when the kids get out of school, then I'm going to get started. Then the kids get out of school, you go, you know what, we're busier than ever now. These kids have so many different functions and stuff they have to go through, we just don't have time. And then you say, okay, well, when they get back in school, we'll get started. Then you go, you know what, this winter has hit us really hard. Have you ever seen weather like this before? When the weather clears up, then I'm going to get started. Then I'm going to really go at it. <laughs> then the weather starts to clear up a little bit, and next thing you know, the kids are back in school. right? And it's a vicious cycle, and it keeps going and going and going. The time will never be right, folks. And I'm a victim of this, too. I do this all the time. Honey, I'm going to start working out next week. Why don't you do it today? Well, um, American Idol's coming on, so I don't want to miss that. Right? And we all do this. 
but you've got to commit to yourself that you're going to meet these goals. And when you set those goals, you'll start forsaking those other dumb things like American Idol and everything else. All right? You'll start staying on track. Now, hopefully you got the idea of how to do the map, the, uh, the wheel of life. You guys are going to go home and do that. You don't have to do it tonight if you don't want to. You can wait till the morning. You can do it tomorrow at work. Instead of sitting in your inbox, you can do something productive at work. <laughs> Next thing I want to tell you, don't tell your bosses I said that, by the way, especially those of you that work at Lifestyles. Now, I want you to go out there and raise your expectations. And there's a page in here for each one of these different areas in your life where you're going to go through and you're going to actually put pen to paper like I've been telling you. You're going to write down some of these goals. And so, you, again, you'll do that exercise at home. And there's a quote up here at page 14, basically talks about people being smarter, better looking, everything else, but going out there and not being happy in other areas. They're not going out there and pursuing the things they want to do. The next part talks about imitate the good in people and leave the bad. If you go out there and you have a mentor that is mentoring you in some fashion, let's say that you have somebody you know that is doing very well in business and they're in the business you want to be in. They're doing very successful and you want to imitate that part of their life but you don't like the way they're living some other aspect of their life. Leave that part. Learn from them what you can on the part that you want to improve and leave the rest. There may be people that say, you know what, Chris is doing great in this one aspect of his life. You know, I really want to get to that point where he's at, but I don't like the way he lives this other aspect of his life. Don't discount me as a person totally and think you can't learn from me just because you don't like one aspect of my life. Take what you can. All right. Now, the next thing you need to learn is basically that your goal should be SMART. And what I mean by this is it's actually an acronym. That stands for the five things that you need to use to make your goals. Your goals should be specific. They should be measurable. They should be attainable. They should be realistic and they should be timely. And I'll go through and touch on these a little bit. Specific, you need to ask yourself exactly how you're going to go out and, and make this, this goal. It's got to be something specific to you. And you've got to ask yourself the six main questions. Who, what, where, when, why, and which. You need to define all of those things when you're going through making a specific goal. Measurable, it has to be something you can track. It has to be you know, something that can be, I, I guess basically I was going to say it's something enumerated, a number of some kind, but it's got to be something you can track and you can see progress whenever you're doing it. And the reason for that is twofold. One, of course, is just that you want to be able to track where you're going. But another thing you want to be able to do is if you're out there and you're at the start here and your goal is up here, not only do you want to have that big goal, but you want to set some milestones along the way. You want to be able to say, okay, I reached this, 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 you know, because sometimes maybe that big goal is just too far out there. And you can't picture yourself being there yet. Which is another exercise I do want you to do. I want you to go out there and I want you to picture yourself having whatever it is that you're promising yourself you're going to go do. If you want you know, go out there and you want to, let's say, uh, goal, uh, yacht's not a real goal, but picture yourself on the yacht. Picture yourself throwing a party, throwing a benefit on that yacht. All right? Maybe you're doing a fundraiser for one of your favorite charities, something like that. Picture that stuff happening. You've got to imagine it. You've got to envision it. You've all heard the saying that what the, man, what the mind of man can conceive and believe, it can achieve. There are some amazing things in this world right now that didn't used to exist just came out of somebody's mind. And I don't know how many of you are Trekkies, like Star Trek, but all the technology we have now, a lot of the stuff came from that show. Somebody dreamt that stuff up. They thought, man, we should have these guys walking around, and they should have these little things they can flip open, and they can talk to each other. That would be cool. <laughs> Anybody here have a cell phone? <laughs> exactly. And it's just amazing the kind of things that people can dream up. And I used to have people come up and tell me they were going to do something, or they're going to achieve something, or they're going to create something. And I go, no way. You're not going to do that. There's no way. You know, given who you are and your resources and whatever else, you're not as pretty as I am, you know, whatever. And then they would go out and do it and surpass it. 
I stopped telling people they can't do things. I'm all about telling people you can have anything in life you want to have, you can be anything you want to be, you can do anything you want to do. Because there are no limitations. The four minute mile, they used to tell people you can't physically do a four minute mile. It's impossible. Then after the first guy broke it, and he broke the expectation that you can't do it, it's physically impossible, there were people running a four minute mile all the time after that. All right. It's just one of those limitations that we give ourselves. You need to get rid of those. Now here, when I'm talking about going from start to finish, going to your goal, imagine you were a, on a boat or a, sail, a sailboat, a ship, something like that, and you don't have a rudder or you don't have some way to steer. And you're trying to go from here to there, you're basically just going to be floating. right? You may get to your goal, but it's not going to be very quick. It's not going to be a direct route. In fact, you may even veer off here and never even get there. But what you're going to do by taking control of your life, by setting these goals and working towards them, is you may actually go out there, you may drift, you may even get to the point where you don't feel like you're getting towards your goal. But what you're going to do is you're going to correct. You're going to go out here and you're going to start to drift off and you're going to come back. You may drift off again. But it's going to be a lot less, and you're going to get to your goal. And when this happens right here, when you drift, give yourself a break. Everybody does this. You can't be perfect all the time. If you go out there and you start working towards your goal and you get distracted, that's fine. Review those goals, get back on track, and get back towards your goal. All right? Now, back to SMART. Attainable. These goals have to be attainable. You need to set goals that are specifically important for you to achieve. Something that you will actually go out and do. All right, it's got to be personal. Something you will do. They have to be realistic. Remember that you have to go out there and you have to have goals that you personally have the ability to go out and do. All right. Now I just got done saying that you need to go out there and dream big. So I still want you to dream big. I still want you to go out there and not have any limitations but be realistic at the same time. All right. Timely. You've got to have a deadline. I'm the kind of person, I don't know how the rest of you are, I'm the kind of person that can't start doing something until like the twelfth hour, right? Until the last possible second. And I do very, very well when I do that. I'm a cruncher. I used to be in college, I used to be a crammer. I would cram a whole semester worth of stuff in my brain like the night before. Okay, So that works well for me. But most of you, I'm going to prescribe that you go out there and you do it in increments. You get started right away. Zig Ziglar was talking about on his thing where he had to learn a certain number of, he had to lose, uh, I think it was 37 pounds, something like that. And the doctor gave him 10 pounds. And he said, I was so confident that I could do that, that I didn't even get started for the first 29 days. And that's kind of the way that I do a lot of things as well. But we need to go out there and get started and start working towards those goals. Because having that sense of urgency is going to drive you. Don't put things out too far. I mean, if it's a long-term lifetime goal, that's fine. But you know, make it some kind of a time that's really going to give you a sense of urgency and you're going to get started. Now, here's some examples of goals down there on that page. And I'm going to go through the first one. And basically, it says something like this. I'm going to start building passive income streams so I can retire young. Well, it's not really quantifiable, is it? It's not something we can really set a goal and say, OK, I need to be here, 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 here. We can't really define if we're getting there. We don't know if we're on the right path or not. And the second one's a little bit better. It says, I will start building passive income streams with real estate so I can replace my earned income with passive income in five years or less. Now we're talking about a known number. We've got earned income, you know, the amount of earned income we make. We got five years, we got a deadline, we got some urgency. So that's a little bit better. I would go even a step further. I would say, set a goal like, I want to have 15 single family properties in the next five years, bringing me in $4,000 a month in passive income. Now, those are numbers. I like numbers. I'm a computer engineer. I can track those. I can figure out how far I am, what percentage of the way I am. I know if I veered off course, I know that if I have five years to do it, if the first three years I haven't gotten, you know, say 10 properties at least or so, I know I'm off track. I know I need to buckle down and I need to get back on track. 
All right? So those are the kind of goals that I want you to set. Make them quantifiable, get that sense of urgency going. 